What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Vince and today we are back with another reaction. Today we're reacting to evidence that Bruce Lee was superhuman. Now fun fact about me, <laughs> I'm a certified black belt. <laughs> so play with me if you want to, cause I'm really about that life. They used to call me Vince Lee back in my day. You better ask them. You better ask them. But anyway, we finna get into this one. This one's recommended by my boy, Mr. T. So let's get into it. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh! Oh! Might sound too philosophical, but it's unacting, acting, or acting, unacting. If you... I don't get it. You lost me. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Bruce Lee was a legend in every sense of the word. This martial artist touched the hearts and minds of many around the world, either through his outlandish fight scenes or the serenity of his philosophical Wait, he invented musics. the one-inch punch, right? By the time that Bruce died in 1973, he had already built a time-defying legacy. He died in 1973? Being just 32. This boy's still being talked about today! 1973, let me think how old I was. I was negative 50, boy! Oh. Don't do the math! What the heck? Two years old. Many of He's us weren't even alive back then, but we sure do remember the famous martial artist and movie star. That's what I'm Although saying. Although Bruce had many talents and skills, his martial art cops were definitely his top selling point. This man was so awesome, in fact, that many believe that he could have been superhuman. And in this video, we'll explore some evidence that lends credibility to those claims. Yeah, it don't make Join sense a lot of the stuff he was doing. As we have doing. a look at 10 pieces of evidence that prove that Bruce Lee was superhuman. Number 10. The Dragon Flag Bruce Lee's ascent to the top of the martial arts field was definitely not by accident. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. All right, I don't pause a lot. Hold Lee on. Was Watch super this. Human. Number 10. The Dragon Flag Bruce Lee's ascent Wait. to the top of the martial arts. We're not finna act like this man's not a werewolf. We're not finna act like he's not finding a werewolf. I've heard of chest hair, but back hair? Dude, back, you can braid his back hair. You can braid that. Y'all, if any of y'all are walking around with his back hair this long, bro, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to uh, be cool with y'all. Arts field was definitely not dangerous. by accident. He knew from a young age that he was destined to be a great fighter, and he quite literally spent every waking moment of his life honing his skills so that he could be the best that he could be. Now, if you have any experience with fighting, you know that you have to be in peak physical condition. Otherwise, there's a good chance that you'll be getting knocked on your keister when you oh. take the stage. Bruce, however, was so dedicated to his Dang. fighting art that it pretty much bordered on obsessive. According to Bruce's wife, he would spend pretty much every waking moment and free time that he had training. That's how disciplined and focused that he was. Oh, he's Bruce crazy. was especially focused on his core, the part of the body that includes the torso and stomach. He believed that this part of the body was involved in basically every form of movement and fighting technique, so he spent even more time developing that. That really makes sense. But being sense. the man who was destined for such great things, Bruce was not about to do the regular training drills. Instead, he invented his own workout regiment called Dragon Flag. In Dragon Flag, Bruce would lay flat on a bench and then would lift up his entire body from the bench with nothing but his shoulders touching the surface. From there, he'd hold that position for minutes, raising and lowering his entire body at will. Which is probably something- What? Hey, you know what's crazy? Mind you guys, you gotta think about it like this. This is 1972. 1972, that means he was the first one out there doing that. So imagine being in the olden times back then, and you just a normal person that you walk around, and this man is doing uh, a flagpole exercise. Like, I don't even know what that means. Bro, thing I'm going to skip the next time that I hit the gym. Today, Dragon Flag is a staple of many martial arts training programs and Not exercise sessions. It. Although I don't really think that there's anyone who could do it as impressively as Bruce Lee. Number nine, Bruce caught rice grains with chopsticks. Cap. While physical fitness Cap. is undoubtedly a great way for any fighter to train, it's also important that they work on several of their instincts. And amongst those instincts, Hardly does any matter more than the reflexes. The ability to think fast and react to changes around you is going to help anyone, especially a fighter who's in a bit of a tight Ooh. spot while in combat. Bruce knew this well, and being the obsessed and focused fighter he was, he worked tirelessly to hone his reflexes so that they could help him while fighting. But while most people would use regular methods to train their reflexes, 
I think that we all know that Bruce was not one for the regular stuff. Yeah. According to legend, he would actually throw grains of rice into the air and then literally catch them in midair. I need to fact check whoever saw this, bro. Whoever saw this going on, bro, I need to fact check you because I don't believe it. Do y'all know how little a rice grain is? A rice grain. Literally, it's like this small. You could probably put a rice grain in your mouth and forget it's there, bro. No, that's how small it is, but you telling me I can't even grab noodles with the chopsticks. He's throwing up little rices and getting them out the air like that, boy. What the heck? Air with nothing but chopsticks. Now, if you've seen the 1984 classic Karate Kid, you'll We've probably all seen it. remember the point where Mr. Miyagi trains Daniel to catch a fly with a pair of chopsticks, and I'm pretty sure the movie got its inspiration from the legendary Bruce Lee himself. Oh it was reported that Bruce was a master of this drill and would catch the rice almost every time that he threw it into the air. But there's no video evidence of that, but considering how dedicated he was, I wouldn't doubt that it actually happened one little bit. Ew. Number 8. Bruce was unusually strong Whenever you think of the word superhuman, it's easy to see why one of the first things that comes Superman. to your mind is strength. After all, superheroes can pull off amazing feats of strength like they're nothing at all. But if Bruce should be described as being superhuman, it's kind of logical that he'd be much stronger than any average person. And in many ways, he was. And merely looking at Bruce, you may easily doubt the fact that he could have superhuman strength. After all, he wasn't necessarily the most muscular or even toned person I out was there. just thinking that. With That's what I was going to say. He doesn't look like super strong, which is crazy for him to have trained that much. I'm not going to lie. He looked about 5'2", 120, but he was out there beating people 6'3", 200. Like, that's crazy. With his relatively small stature, it's pretty tempting to overlook his strength. But you'd be wrong. By simply looking at some of his training videos, you could get the sense that Bruce was incredibly strong. Just take a look at him working with punching bags. Most people who use large punching bags to practice their kicks and punches would do so in a slow and controlled manner, even those with abs and 200 packs. Bruce, on the other hand, packs. pretty much tore through these bags like they were Swiss cheese. No. Bruce reportedly even had challenges using regular punching bags because he'd simply punch through them and tear them down. So, per usual, he needed to get a new challenge. Now, keep in mind that regular punching bags weigh about 50 kilograms, but the bags that Bruce would use weighed north of 135 kilograms, Dang! which is almost three times the weight of a regular punching bag and I'm pretty sure that Bruce grew to rip through those bad boys and tear them to shreds as well. So, it is safe to say, this isn't a man that you'd like to get a punch or kick from yeah, on your lovely body. I'm good. Number 7. Speaking of punch or kick from him, how many of y'all think y'all can beat him up? I'm like, a million dollars on the line. A million dollars on the line. All you gotta do is win the fight against prime Bruce Lee. Are you winning or no? I'm not gonna lie, a million dollars is a big incentive for me. I'm not gonna lie, I probably turn into the Hulk or something and throw him through a wall. Oh, a million dollars. Regular approach to exercising. Everyone exercises. Some of us do more so than others, but that's a discussion for a different day. Amongst the many exercise routines that are available, push-ups and pull-ups are one of the most popular. Today, you don't even have to be a fighter to learn how to do a push-up or pull-up. After all, both exercises Dang. offer the best of both worlds. You don't need any special gear for them, and they're difficult enough to help you work up a sweat and supercharge your body. Thanks to their complexity, we all have a threshold of push-ups and pull-ups that we can all perform. Some of us can go oh. up to 50 push-ups at a go, while few of us can only manage about 10. I can do 100 yes, straight. I know myself, there's no shame in it. Here's the thing though, Bruce was on an entirely no shame. different level. Yeah, I guess. If you have a specific number of push-ups that you're comfortable doing, I guarantee you that Bruce Lee could do double without even breaking a sweat. And if you're still doubting, well, consider this. At some point, Bruce was actually tested to see how many push-ups that he could do. How and many? in true Bruce Lee fashion, he decided to raise the bar by completing the test with one hand while using only two fingers, his thumb and index finger. And even at that- What? Why would he do that? Bro, I know his fingers were throbbing, bro. And there's no way, I promise you. If they said he did more than 50 push-ups with just these two fingers, bro, I'm hitting 300 push-ups tonight. 
At, he was able to nail up to 200 push-ups. Bruce was able to take things up yet another notch when he offered to complete a different challenge by doing push-ups with only two thumbs. And in this position, he still managed to do over a hundred of them. What? And now for the grand finale. If you were to grade Bruce based on the regular two-handed push-ups that we all struggle to accomplish, he Don't was put reportedly me in your category. able to do over 1,500 of them in a row That's cap. without stopping. That's cap. The man was a beast on the boards, and somehow you definitely wouldn't want to get into a competition with that at the gym. Number 6. Bruce was too fast to be filmed. Bruce Lee began his early life as a martial artist, and like many of the time, he had spent a great deal of his life honing his skills. Ooh. So by the time that Hollywood came calling, he had essentially already become one of the most renowned martial artists in the world. But here's the thing though, Bruce almost didn't even make it into the movie business. At the time, movie making technology was just getting to the peak of its prowess, and there was still a lot of work that needed to be done. Bruce was so fast that directors literally had issues filming him. In 1966, Bruce got one of his biggest breaks on screen with The Green Hornet. He was a in this movie? Television oh, no, they remade it. Okay, they remade this Green Hornet. I was going to say, series that lasted Seth just Rogen. one season, but Bruce was undoubtedly the breakout star. However, shooting the series was very challenging because the cameras of the time just couldn't capture his moves in real time. Wait, did they remake Unlike it? Unlike today, when we have cameras that can shoot up to 240 frames per second, most movie cameras in the 60s and 70s No, this is the Green Warden I saw. I didn't know he was in this. I didn't know he was in this movie. What the heck? And too fast to film. Do you know <laughs> Y'all couldn't see that. But you telling me if he did that on my camera, you wouldn't be able to see him. That's, that's crazy. Frames per second. This would mean that many of Bruce's fight scenes just couldn't show up correctly on camera. Bruce could throw up to nine punches and six kicks respectively in a single second. No. And that's surely nothing that could record that oh, much. That is Producers of the Green Hornet would claim that many of the recordings that they had showed Bruce seemingly standing motionless while all of his enemies fell to the ground. But in reality, the man was just too fast to be captured. Eventually, filmmakers had to ask him to take things down a couple of notches just so that they could follow his actions. Number 5. The One Inch Punch The field this of martial arts is about. full of a lot of flashy feats. You can see artists breaking concrete slabs like they were made of plastic or jumping high in the air like they had suspenders attached to their waists. Oh. However, I would argue that no martial arts feat is as famous as Bruce Lee's One Inch Punch. As the name would suggest, the one-inch punch would have Bruce punch a target from just an inch away and pretty much send them flying. The punch has become something of a pop culture legend, even being featured in the classic cult film Kill Bill. That's Despite my movie. standing just an inch away from his target, Bruce's punch could send them flying as far back as five meters. Still, the punch was strong enough to essentially incapacitate the victim once it had landed. According to one researcher at Stanford University, Bruce's fists travel a small distance in mere milliseconds in order to deliver the one-inch punch. But how does that explain However, the power? The jab actually draws power from Bruce's legs. Mm. To land the punch, Bruce straightens his legs with a quick and explosive knee extension, and this sudden jerk of his legs increases the speed of his hips, which in turn moves his shoulder forward and allows him to thrust his arm. Bruce's <laughs> elbow is then extended very quickly as well, driving his fist forward, and finally he flicks his wrist just before impact, further increasing the velocity of the oh punch. My goodness. By the time that Bruce lands his one-inch punch, he's combined the strength of some of the biggest muscles of his body. It's been estimated that the force of the punch is almost equivalent to that of a car crash at about 50 kilometers per hour. And They just compare getting punched by this dude to getting hit by a truck. No. 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 So you're telling me if he punched me right here in my heart with his one inch punch, I'm dead? Yeah, bro. This man needed to be avoided at all costs, bro. They like, literally, literally, I like, I maybe this, I, I'm convinced he was superhuman. So it's no wonder that the punch sends his opponents flying in an instant and incapacitates them for minutes. Number four. Bruce's kicks sent people literally flying. No way. As the determined martial artist that he was, 
Bruce was also adept at using pretty much anything that he had when the time came to throw down. And although most of the devastation that he would cause was with his hands, Bruce was not exactly a lightweight when it came to using his feet either. According to many sources, one of Bruce's most treasured possessions was his training shield. He would use it to practice his kicks and pretty much took the shield everywhere he went. As the reports would have it, Bruce would invite people to wear the training shield and then he would kick them. The amount of power that he put into the shields varied, <laughs> but it was noted that Bruce could easily kick people so hard that they went straight up flying into the air. Dang. Number three, the lightning fast magic trick. Okay, Everyone before we get into this, bro, what is this gonna even be, bro? Not like we're not even talking about fighting no more. This dude got powers? He out here throwing key blasts and stuff, bro? What? And loves a little bit of magic. It stretches the mind and makes us all want to believe in the truly unbelievable. Never want to shy away from an opportunity to amaze. Bruce also dabbled in some magic back in the day. Only that this trick would once again prove just how superhuman that he was. We all know the classic trick where a magician pulls a coin from the back of your hair, but Bruce would take that trick and tweak it just a little bit. In his own version, he'd place a coin in the palm of your hand and then ask you oh. to stretch your hand out with the coin in it. The moment that you notice any slight movement in Bruce's body, your task would be to close your hand quickly so that he didn't take the coin. It might seem simple, but here's the thing. Bruce was so quick that no one was able to stop him from taking the coin from their hand. What? It's just another testament to how quick the man was. For an added layer of difficulty, he then decided to switch things up and instead of only trying to take the coin, he would replace the coin that he took with a completely no. different one, all before you'd even be able to close your hand. Just imagine if Bruce Lee had chosen to be a pickpocket instead of a martial artist, he probably <laughs> he, he, would have made a killing. He'd be Number dangerous. two, he was unpunchable. Bruce Lee's chops as a martial artist became obvious pretty quickly, but for some reason, quite a lot of people still needed to be convinced. Even though he had become a world-renowned name by the 1960s, Bruce would always be challenged to street fights. Many people in that time just needed some convincing, or perhaps they just loved being hit. Who really knows? While Bruce mostly shrugged off the challenges, there were certain times when he had to actually show exactly how good that he was, and wow, were people convinced. While on the set of Enter the Dragon, Dang. Bruce was challenged to a fight and he this obliged. Dude big. And when he went on to take his opponent apart, dodging every single blow that was thrown at him, he eventually locked his opponent in a submission against a wall. Then when he was finished, the always magnanimous Bruce Lee still gave a lesson in combat. Kicking someone's butt and teaching them how you did it? Well, that's, that's the ultimate disrespect. If you beat somebody up and then give my hand say, here, get up little buddy. Let me help you. Let me teach you what you did wrong. You threw this punch, but I slipped it. You should have threw this one so you can hit me in my nose, but you didn't. And then he knocked you down again. Bro, that's the ultimate disrespect. Swell guy indeed. Number one. Uh oh. He dislocated someone's shoulder with a slap. No. So at this point, we've pretty much covered Bruce's insane feats of strength and the fact that his slender frame did not do him any justice. But just in case you still doubt how strong that he was, maybe this will do it for you. Despite the fact that he was obviously stronger than everyone Whoa. else and needed to get special equipment just to train, there were still times when Bruce had to spar with actual people. I'm not sure why anyone in their right mind would see <laughs> Bruce Lee and say, hey, that's the guy I want to spar with, but I guess that some people really believed in themselves in the 1960s. That's probably Anyways, not how it been... went down. That's probably not how it went down. They didn't say, hey, I want to spar with him. They are probably in the same, like, uh, training class as him, and the instructor said, you are paired up with him. Now you over there sweating bullets because, he, you know, you got to fight this man after you just see him do a triple, quadruple backflip and kick somebody's head off and reported that Bruce Lee once dislocated someone's arm in training. Now keep in mind that the victim couldn't just have been anybody. He must have been a highly trained martial artist himself. Right. He probably thought that he had the stones to go one-on-one -on -one with the great one. But still though, Bruce Lee dislocated his entire shoulder. As the reports would go, Bruce was quite confused when he was confronted after the altercation. According to him, he didn't even hit the guy very hard. And what many thought to be a punch was, in fact, more of a light slap. Once again, I don't know how hard it is to learn, 
but don't go within hitting distance of Bruce Lee. Considering the many yeah, feats that he managed I to agree. pull off in his lifetime, it's easy to see why many would remember Bruce Lee as the greatest martial artist who ever lived, but perhaps the reason why he became so good at combat was the fact that he was just not a normal human being. <laughs> I'm really not sure why many people decided to still get within striking distance of him, but at least they were the living proof that we all need that he was a demigod that walked among us. Which of these feats shocked you the most? Tell me all about it in the comments section down below. The feat that probably shocked me the most uh, was the one-inch punch, bro. The fact that you can hit somebody from that close of a distance and it feels like you got hit in the chest by a car? Get him out of there. That means you need to go reevaluate like I'm going to do right now. After watching this video, I had to reevaluate my karate status. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a black belt. I gotta be at least brown. What's the lowest, bro? What's the lowest color? Y'all let me know, and that's what I am. White, white belt? Like, I don't know. That, that's probably what we all are compared to him, but y'all let me know what was the craziest feat to y'all in the comment section, like he said. And y'all know, too. If y'all don't do the video too much, comment, like button, notify button, subscribe, and all those, because guess what? <gasps> we gone.